Hello everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at range betting strategies in single race pots in position. So what is a range bet strategy? A range bet strategy is just a strategy where you use around a quarter pot or a one third pot sizing. So you're not really focused on trying to balance your range, pick your bluffs, pick your value hands, do any of the hard labor that usually goes into a complex uh, c-bet strategy you're just betting everything on certain boards so why should we do this when we bet with a very small sizing it allows us to get value on boards where villain doesn't have a whole lot of made hands that he can call with we can still get calls with our value hands by betting a very small sizing and we can also fold out a significant chunk of his range and not have to risk that much money uh, especially on some boards where he has maybe a very small group of hands that he might be able to raise us with, we don't lose so much by betting uh, this very small size. This really allows us to utilize all of our range and, and get the most value out of it in certain situations. So what are some factors that contribute to range betting? So the first thing is we want to have a large nut advantage. That means many strong hands exclusive to our range that are not contained within villain's range. The second component is that we want to make sure that villain's range is composed of mostly air and has very few hands that he can call substantial bet sizes with. And third is that we want to have position. The third component is pretty key. Here's why. Um, it is very, very rare that you will be c-betting your entire range out of position in a single race pot. Um, Usually when you're using a quarter or one third pot size, the solver still balances those out with a fair amount of checks. So it's very rare that you will have these situations out of position where you can say, okay, let me just bet everything without discrimination like you have when you're in position. So here's a very important distinction. I think a lot of people, uh, might fall into this trap of thinking, okay, I have a very high equity advantage, so I should just bet my entire range. But you really have to pay attention to both how your range is composed as well as how villain's range is composed. So, you know, if villain has an air heavy range, yes, you should bet your entire range. But certain boards where villain has a condensed range, where a significant chunk of the range is composed of medium strength hands, you can afford to bet much larger. So on those sorts of boards, sometimes you can overbet. Sometimes you can bet pot size. Raw equity does not determine the betting strategy we should use, but rather the way equity is distributed across both players' ranges. So now we're going to jump into some examples. So today we're going to be looking at under the gun versus big blind in a single race pot. On the left is our under the gun opening range, and on the right is our big blind flatting range. A few things real quick. This is just a concept that was discussed in modern poker theory. It talks about this concept of equity buckets. And basically the idea is that anything with greater than or equal to 75% equity can be classified as a strong hand. Anything between 50% and 75% is a good hand. And anything between 33% to 50% is a weak hand. And anything below that is basically trash. So with that in mind, let's jump into some examples. So the first example that we're going to take a look at is a trip ace board. Hero is pretty much betting his range around 93% of the time. So that's a pretty high c-bet frequency. For the big blind, 54% of his range is no made hands at all, has some weaker pocket pairs, has some medium strength pocket pairs, two uh, holdings that are decent pocket pairs. Let's go ahead and look at the way equity is distributed for both players. So first, let's look at strong hands. So we can look at any hands with greater than 75% equity, and we can see that 40% of the under the gun players range is composed of strong hands, and less than 10% of the big blinds range is composed of strong hands. And now let's look at weak and or trash hands. So that's anything with equity below 50%. And you can actually see that around 85% of the big blinds range consists of weak and or trash hands. 
versus the under the gun, it's really only the, the bottom 28% of his range that's composed of weak or trash hands. And for the big blind, it's the overwhelming majority of his range that's weak or trash with a small group uh, of hands that are equalized to our range. And we still though have a huge range advantage and a huge nut advantage. Next, we can look at an ace queen jack two-tone board. Here, we are betting 100% of the time in the under the gun position. So again, let's look at how the equity is distributed. So you can pretty much see that there's no component of the big blinds range that is equalized to ours. So let's start out by looking at the strong hands. Around 35% of the under the gun player's range is composed of strong hands. Less than 10% of the big blinds range is composed of strong hands. And then we can look at weak and or trash hands. And again, you can see that pretty much the bottom 70% of big blinds range is composed of weak and or trash hands and the bottom 22% of the under the guns players range is composed of weak or trash hands. So we have the same exact scenario as before. A very small component of the in position players range is composed of weak or trash hands and the overwhelming majority of the villains range is composed of weak and or trash hands and a very, very tiny sliver of hands that actually have any sort of value, which the hands around this area would be the hands that the big blind's calling with. But you can definitely see that even with a very small sizing, you're folding out so much of his range. So now let's take a look at a King King 10 board. On this board, we're also C betting pretty much 100% of the time, mixing it up with a 50% pot size and a 25% pot size, but 25% is the main size that's getting used here. So again, we can look at how equity is distributed for both players. Every component of the in position player's range is ahead of every other component of the big blind player's range. We can go ahead and look at how uh, strong hands are distributed. Pretty much the same thing we've seen before. 35% of the under the gun player's range is composed of strong hands. Less than 10% of the big blinds range is composed of strong hands. And then if we look at weak hands, overwhelming majority, around 80% of the big blinds range is composed of weak hands. And again, a very tiny chunk around bottom 30% of the under the guns range is composed of weak hands. You can definitely see that you don't need a very large bet size to fold out almost the majority of his range. There's probably a very small portion of his range that he might be raising with, calling with, mixing it up. And you can see that Big Blind is, is raising with a very tiny chunk of his range. When we bet quarter pot, we are folding out pretty much the majority of his range. So I actually wanted to go ahead and show you one counter example. Um, this is actually an example where we don't range bet, we actually check our entire range. And this is on an ace three deuce two tone. The big blind actually has the nut advantage. You know, he has five four suited, we don't have five four suited. He has draws like six four suited. Um, he has a range of pocket pairs which can form trips. He has pocket threes, he has pocket deuces. If he has pocket fours, that actually functions as a four outer draw. So he, he has a lot of nut type hands and a lot of hands that he can bluff with. So if we were to see that, he can pretty much begin to raise us with a very large sizing and deny us equity. Therefore, in this situation, the under the gun player checks. So if you look at how strong hands are composed, we have a small group of the lower end of our strong hands, uh, of which we have more abundance, but pretty much the, the top 11% of both of our ranges, the big blind is actually ahead. And if we look at weak hands, yes, the big blind still has a very large chunk of his range that's weak. We have a smaller chunk of our, uh, our range that's weak, but the big blind has the nut advantage here, which is why we would not want to range bet on a board that is low and connected. So the final board that I wanna show you is one that's a little bit interesting. So we have 10 deuce deuce, and 
it's a pretty dry board, but it's definitely not in line with some of the other boards where you have mostly high cards and it's somewhat dry and the big blind doesn't really have any sort of nut advantage. On this board, the big blind does actually have a nut advantage. So the big blind um, has a component of his range that's actually equalized with our range. Then a small component of the range that is actually ahead of our range. And then it very quickly drops off. We have a significant chunk, around 25% of our range, that is composed of strong hands. He has a small chunk, around 3% of his range, that is ahead of our range. So why should we be betting our entire range on a board like this, where Big Blind does have somewhat of the nut advantage, and not betting any of our range on a board like this, where Big Blind also has a small nut advantage, obviously significantly more nut advantage on this board than he does on this board. Although Big Blind has some hands that are ahead of our range, there, there aren't really any cards that could come that would increase his equity. But there are a lot of cards that could come that could increase our equity. If an ace comes, if a king comes, if a jack comes, suddenly a significant chunk of our range will be strengthened. The big blind tends to have a much higher turn probing frequency on an ace three deuce board um, on various runouts. So if you look at a four, a five, um, uh, another deuce, another six, another seven. So if you look at the turn report for a 10 deuce deuce board, after we have c bet the flop, there are really not any cards that could come out on later streets that result in a substantial turn probing frequency from the big blind. So that's one of the reasons why we can range bet a board like 10 deuce deuce, because although the big blinds might have some moderate nut advantage, there aren't really cards that can result in a drastic change of equities, which means that the big blind can't really uh, raise us in a polarized manner. Whereas on an ace three deuce board, if we did start to see that the big blind could raise us in a very polarized manner, he'd have a host of draws, a host of made hands, made straights, a host of flush draws, various combos that have connected with the board. To conclude this, we bet our entire range when we have a nut advantage or significantly more hands with greater than 75% equity, we have position, and more than 50% of villain's range is weak or trash. So that'll be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. I have a bunch more content coming. Now I actually have time to create stuff. So I'll try to create some stuff that you guys like and find interesting. All right, have a good day.